This Indian film was a psychedelic tribute to the martial arts master. Bruce Lee's truest legacy was found in his son, Brandon. Brandon Bruce Lee had admired his father and had difficulty separating the myth he heard from the breathing human being he had briefly known. The younger Lee had not wanted to be a martial artist or to make action movies. He studied drama at Emerson College in Boston and took acting lessons in Manhattan in hopes of becoming a serious actor, but had little success in getting the roles he wanted. He eventually chose to take advantage of his unique heritage. He decided to jumpstart his career by making a few martial arts movies and hoped he would then make the transition to more serious movie making. This decision would eventually lead to his death. Because of being my dad's son, totally, you know, solely because of being my dad's son, I've had the opportunity to be in a lot of stupid action movies that I've turned down, <laughs> you know. Um, for that reason, I was always, it's not, it's not about that. I mean, that's not what acting's about. It's not what, listen to me, I'm a 27-year-old actor with three films under his belt. But I know what it. Acting's <laughs> about. In my opinion, yeah. my young, uncultured, uneducated opinion, it's not what it's about. It's about people and human situations and, and that's what's always affected me about it you know and if it doesn't have that I mean if, if the film if you don't care about the characters and you don't believe in them as people it's just kind of a pointless exercise in blowing things up you know absolutely and uh, did, did you worry I mean when when did you decide to become an actor when did you decide that, that was what you wanted to do that's what I always wanted to do I didn't really ever want to do anything else and the martial arts you studied at the same time, but not because you wanted to be a, a martial arts star in that sort of way, I presume. Yeah, you're right. I didn't. I, my dad started training me as soon as I could walk. He trained me while he was alive, and after he passed away, I just kind of kept at it because I didn't really think about it much. You know, you, you, know, you, you get started at something, you just continue with it. And my dad had a circle of students uh, that were close to him, and so they were friends of our family. And one of those men, Danny and Asanto, continued to be my teacher. So mm -hmm. it was kind of a nice unbroken line, mm -hmm. you know. And I hadn't really done it at that age, certainly, with any thought of getting into martial arts movies. Mm -hmm. um, it's just kind of been that I have this skill and have first happened to get the opportunity to do films that give me a chance to use it. Were you worried about becoming an actor because of the fact, excuse <coughs> me, that your father was Bruce Lee? Were you worried that people were going to just see you as sort of trying to follow on in his legacy and kind of take advantage of it in a way, I suppose. Yeah, it's something to be careful about. Because I, my dad left a really wonderful legacy. And I meet people all over the world who really admire him and admire his work and really have been very positively affected by it, too, you know. And I wouldn't want to do anything to mar that, mm. you know. But I don't think I'm going to. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't you asked to? to star in, in some sort of biopic they're making about your father's life next year. You, mm -hmm. you asked, and, and you turned that down, didn't you? Yeah, I just uh, I was a little scared by the whole thing, really. It's, it's strange to play your own father, you know. Um, <laughs> I can imagine. Is it? Kiss, kissing your own mother, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of, a, <laughs> kind of an Oedipal thing, name? you know. It could be kind of strange. Um, it's funny, too, because, to tell you the truth, if it had come along later in my career, you know, I, I might have more seriously considered it. But as it is, it's so early in my career, it's the kind of thing I just feel like it could really be a career ender. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? It could be there and then gone. Yeah, I'm not sure anybody's ever done it, really, have they? I mean, 
Did, did, God is their own father. Did I they ever get any that. of the Douglas boys or anything like that? Or? No, but he's not dead yet. He's not, is he right? Well, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I couldn't really wrap my mind around it. You know mm, what I mean? Mm, mm. Did you, um, did you have to, t I mean, you said that you turned down a lot of action films early on because you didn't want to end up, you know, just making martial arts movies or whatever. Was it ever a sort of worry for you, like, oh my God, I'm going to be a starving actor because I have to keep turning down these sort of movies. Is anyone ever going to offer me something that, that, that's a bit more inspired? Yeah. How were you? <laughs> Did you chew your nails off? Well, you know, I mean, I just, I, 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 I worked, you know, mm. I mean, I, I just supported myself in other ways and went to acting classes and... Because you went to a cheap. lot of acting classes. I mean, you were obviously very serious about wanting to be an actor first and foremost. Yeah. I've been doing it for a while. Uh, it's what I wanted to do since I was very young. I, I just, I went to college and studied theater, and when I got out of college, I, I went to New York and enrolled in a theater group there called the American New Theater and did mm -hmm. some stage work. And I'm in a theater group now in Los Angeles called Legal Aliens. And, uh, <laughs> It's, it's a good way of life. I'm getting the chance now to actually get paid for what I've wanted to do mm. for most of my life, and it's great. <laughs> and I'm a big fight fan myself. Mm. You know, I, mean, I, I enjoy those films. And even like you say, uh, we were talking earlier about how some of those films are a little short on character development and plot. It's like sometimes I even don't mind that as much, but it's like, if you're not going to give me that, at least do something innovative with the action, you know what I mean? The very least, give me that. And unfortunately, I don't think that's done that often either. Mm. I'm a big fan of Hong Kong martial arts movies. I think that the action sequences in Hong Kong martial arts movies are unparalleled. They're so much more inventive than, and, and daring, uh, the way they're executed so much better, they're shot better. Uh, the people in them are very skilled. They really leave Western movies in the dust, you know. But that's only those segments of the movie. The rest of the movies, really, the, the quality's not so great, usually. Um, I wanted to try and bring some of that flavor of those Ch Hong Kong martial arts movies, because that's where, that's where I grew up, you know, that's, mm. and that's where I did my first film. I wanted to try and bring some of the flavor of that into Rapid Fire because I've always been a lot more impressed by those films' action sequences than by any films that are done in America. <laughs> the problem with making a martial arts movie in the modern day world is there are guns. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't care how good you are. If you're more than four or five feet away from me and I've got a gun, you're going to lose. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, and I wanted to stay true to that in the film because I hate it. And, you know, like Schwarzenegger commando and guys are like automatic weapons. And they're like all missing, you know? <laughs> it's like chewing up the dirt near him. And I mean, you do that to me too many times in the audience and you lose me. Mm. You know, I go, Bullshit. <laughs> no. right, did you ever see that film, uh, the scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, where the guy... Oh, it's great. The yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, 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 that's, that's the traditional film, you know? Mm. That's like the bit, I was kind of stealing that a little bit with the noon chucks, you know, yeah. when the guy's doing the noon chucks, it's like you just take a towel and go, <laughs> throw it into the <laughs> middle of it, ties it up, you know? The Crow was to be Brandon's fifth and biggest film. The next movie is called The Crow. It's... Martial arts birds? <laughs> Martial artist birds. No, actually, it's about love, death, revenge, Edgar Allan Poe, and coming back from the dead. Is it based on the Edgar Allan Poe story? No, actually, that's The Raven. But um, it's, uh, it's based on an underground comic book, a graphic novella by a guy named James O'Barr that's called The Crow. And it's a story of a rock and roll musician mm -hmm. and his, uh, and his fiancée who are brutally murdered in Detroit, and then he... Big part for you, then. Yeah. <laughs> How long do you stay alive for? Yeah. Actually, you know, in the film, I'm actually alive for a very short period of time, but then I get to come back from the dead to avenge the murders. Don't we just love the movie? Mm -hmm. During the final week's filming of The Crow, Brandon Lee was to tragically die in a cruel accident. Brandon Lee, 28, died at 1.04 p.m. Eastern Standard Time.
Wednesday that you had over regional medical center? At approximately 9 a.m. this morning, an autopsy was performed on the body of Brandon Lee at Onslow Memorial Hospital in Jacksonville, North Carolina. What appeared to be a 44 caliber bullet was removed from Lee's body. Ironically, like his father, Brandon Lee was to only make five films. I feel that I've gotten opportunities that I probably would not have gotten, or at least in a different fashion would have gotten, were I not his son. And I'm very grateful for that. I considered him by far the greatest. And for those who don't consider him the greatest, at least he would be the top candidate for being he who would...